In the next talk, you will learn how you can manage many websites with one NEOS. He's the product owner, he is a product owner at Punkt.de and he takes care of the NEOS IO website. Please welcome on stage Sebastian Helzler. So, hello. So one NEOS, many websites. It's a topic that's quite important to me and interesting to me, so I want to talk about my experience there in the last years. Um, I'm Sebastian Helzle. As uh, Tobias said, I'm product owner in Karlsruhe at Punkt.de, a core team member, and you can contact me via Sebobo in, on all channels in the world. <laughs> so... Um, what will be discussed? Um, I will talk about why we want to have many sites in one NEOS installation, um, what NEOS offers us to make this much easier, um, how to, some small examples, how to create a multi-site. I will not show any code, any you know, PHP involved, just some configuration maybe. Um, a summary, and then we have some time for questions, I hope, because we're five minutes late, so um, we'll see. So. Why do we talk about this? Why do I talk about this topic? Um, I was approached by a customer. I was still freelancing at the time, about four years ago, about uh, multi-site NEOS installation. It was still with 1.2 at the time. Uh, in the beginning, they wanted to have 10 sites, so it was the initial thought was to have 10 separate installations. After the first one was built, we realized mm, one installation is able to do more. Then we started to put the second site in, and then it continued, continued, continued. Now the installation contains 11 sites, and uh, still no need for a second NEOS installation. And it's also up to date with the current NEOS releases. And the customer realized this is a really awesome system, and they wanted me to find out if it's possible to do an installation with 4,000 sites. So last year when I uh, put this topic, um, this talk into the call for papers, I thought this project with the 4,000 sites would be live until now. Sadly, the customer is a bit slow. So they sometimes pay me to think about it, but they don't really get started to implement it. So <laughs> I can sadly not show this, so my small handicap, but I can still uh, share some experience and knowledge I have, which I can already uh, talk about. So, what is our motivation, what is our carrot to do that? Um, the benefits are we have uh, for development and maintenance is much easier. Um, the editor processes get easier. We can launch new sites and uh, microsites, uh, sometimes not even with uh, any developer involved. Um, it has business money advantages. Those are the best ones. So. For development, we have only one code base. We have one or several, uh, we have one project, one distribution, all the code is in there. We have some packages to put everything together. So if we need to do a NEOS update, if we do add some new features, we only have to think about this one thing and not many different uh, projects. And we don't have um, problems with security because we use different versions of packages in the different uh, installations. So that's much better. We have one server set up or one um, distributed server set up, but it's all based on the same project, same setup. Uh, we have one integration pipeline usually. And uh, if you add a feature, all sites benefit from it and not only one. And then you test it and then you put it on the second one and hope it works there too. So even if um, you roll out all the features at the same time, you can still decide to use feature flags so not everything appears everywhere and you can test it on a subset of your sites in this one NEOS installation. Um, yeah, Optimize one site, all benefit from it, be it SEO, uh, be it other improvements, metadata, everything that you add, RSS feeds, everything will just appear in all of them. So, who of you already worked with multi-site NEOS installations? So, half, third, yeah, okay, 30% maybe, good. Hope I can tell you something new today. So, the editorial processes, what is awesome about it? You have, uh, you're able to reuse your content between the sites. Um, there are different ways to do that. I will uh, come to that later. 
You have the same usability and processes everywhere. The editor, if they switch between the sites, they don't have to think anew. you. What, how does it work? What are the tools that they have available? They can just continue their work there. One login, they log in, they can switch in NEOS between all the sites, uh, work there easily. They just have to remember, remember their one password. Cross-site navigation uh, is possible the, because the sites access the same uh, content repository. They know about each other if the permissions allow it. So you can easily have, like, uh, I saw one example by one uh, of the other core team members. They have several shops um, from the same company but sell different things with on different domains. So as soon as they add a new shop, it will just appear in the menus of the other shops. So also no changes necessary there. You can reuse assets like images, documents, uh, PDFs, other files, videos, um, which al also, like for my customer at the time, made a lot of sense because they have a lot of hundreds or maybe thousands of banner pictures, and they are a bit generic stock photos, and they can reuse them everywhere. They don't have to upload them many times. You can launch new uh, sites very easily. Um, you can already for example, uh, add the new site, you can uh, secure it to the outside so people cannot access it, but you can work on it, you can copy content from the other sites in there. Um, for this one project, I made a small backend module where you can say, okay, I want to copy this part of the tree into the new site because you don't have the copy-paste function for that in EOS yet. So they can start with a very good boilerplate for their new similar site. Um, Leos allows you to manage those sites and domain already in the backend, so the core already has a lot of features to help you there. I will also show that later. Um, yeah, secure the domains until go live, then you can just turn them on. And then when you build your site and edit all the stuff, just turn off the authentication and go live. Or if necessary, if you had some kind of preview domain, map the real domain and then go live. The business benefits. Um, reduce long-term costs because you have a lower cost through development and maintenance. Everything, all the sites are managed in the same way, so one time you have to pay, but all sites benefit from it. Um, you have the initial, slightly increased initial cost because for the first site you put in a lot of thought and then you think you thought about everything and uh, you prepared all your packages, your code to work with a lot of things. And then when you build the second side, you realize you were wrong in some places. And then you have to adjust for that and make it more your code base more, uh, more dynamic for those next sites. But then the third side will be... We, in uh, by in this for my customer, made a small script that just adds to another site and there's no real effort necessary to, to adjust the code base anymore. But the first two are the interesting ones. Uh, you have more up-to-date content with improved editor processes because the editors have less work because they have uh, can reuse their code and have other benefits, so um, they have more time to uh, create good content. And reduce time to market because you don't have to set up a new project just to create a new website or microsite. You have a consistent corporate identity. You don't have several um, designs because these pages are not in it, uh, are have the same version. The style sheets have the same version. The HTML has the same version. So you know that if you update your code base, it's just everything has to look the same. So how does Neos offer, uh, how does Neos help us in this way? Um, you can reuse content from other side. That just works already out of the box. It's um, a nice feature, which is not so um, obvious if you don't read the, um, the, the documentation completely. I uh, will show that in a bit. So why would you reuse other content? You have, for example, privacy information, you have license text, you have legal text, you have um, other text, which is always the same on all sides, and you want to be sure that it is the same text on all sides, like it's legally important that there's not a mistake on one side or the editor copies it on one side and then forget, forgets the other ones. You have banners and advertisements that you want to reuse. It doesn't make sense to configure them many times, especially if you have like 10 sites. 
um, records of employees or offers, if you have blog posts or um, want to show who wrote a certain article and stuff like that. That is stuff that should be only managed once. Categories and tags. Also, I have a nice example uh, from Sidegeist for that later. And it works with any reference property, what you can do there. So if you use in your node type configurations references, you can um, yeah, reference everything. Neos will, when you configure it correctly, show you um, where your content is. So if it's the same site, it will just be like slash, uh, in this case, reference elemente. If it comes from another site in your Neos installation, it will show you the whole domain. So how does it work? Uh, Neos has this nice, um, in the, in the uh, configuration of the property, the starting point. And uh, that's, that's what I meant with you have to read the documentation because it's not so obvious. Um, the starting point can be just slash. And slash means you can access the or reference everything in the whole installation, no matter where those nodes are. In this case, it means the in the inspector panel, in the, in the back end, you will show or you can access all documents in the whole installation. But um, you can also have one side as a content hub, which is maybe not even accessible from the outside, and say the starting point for my references is this content hub, and maybe content instead of pages, and then you can access everything that's lying there. Um, Sidegeist um, has this uh, package taxonomy. It's not finished yet. It's still in the experimental status. They have... Um, a system for cross-site categorization and a related content system. So they um, manage yeah, all their categories in the category tree, actually, in, a, in their own backend module you see on the right. And it lives inside its content tree. So you cannot access it from the page selection or site selection. Uh, it's like outside of all the others, and it can only be managed from this backend module. But it's still in the content repository. And um, what, how they use it is that they tag all the content, and they tag all the people, and they tag articles, and their plugins will then, when you render the pages automatically on, uh, based on all this, show at the bottom of their sites um, related offers, related topics. Like if the article has something to do with Neos, it will just show the two Neos experts at Sidegeist at the bottom. You can check it out here. Um, Martin said they will release it soonish. Let's see. Yeah, next two months maybe. Yeah. So, if you reference stuff, it's very helpful to give them good titles. Um, a nice simple trick to do that is to tell every content element that it has a title property, like all the pages. And this way, if you if your editors give it good titles, then you can actually easily find the stuff. So don't call it, they shouldn't put in a title like this is text or something, but really like what is it really about uh, this piece of content. And the nice thing, these titles that you add here, you can also use it in other metadata. Maybe you uh, export um, have some microdata for Google or other search engines. So having good titles everywhere um, is not only helpful in the backend, but actually also for um, for giving your content meaning also to other systems. So uh, yesterday in the showcase, um, we also learned that uh, you can use content dimensions for multi-sites. Um, Bernhard had a, a master site in their project, which also uses content dimensions to um, each dimension value is another site. And the master site controls the main content and every subsite has a variation of this initial content. So when the master site is updated, the children's sites are updated, but the editors of those single page subsites can then modify the content again. So this is also helpful, helpful for example, for legal text. But it needs the mapping of domains to dimensions, which is not possible with the Neos core. You need some additional package for that. And it could get more complex if you add other dimensions uh, with languages and stuff like that. So I would call it a more advanced multi-site system. Yeah. 
Um, you can check out their case study they showed it yesterday or just ask, ask Bernhard Schmidt. Yeah, he can tell you more about that. I never tried it myself. So if you have multiple sites, uh, you have one problem. Often in NEOS installations, you have this one settings YAML in the site package, which controls a lot of stuff. Um, this doesn't work with multi-site installations because um, uh, how NEOS works, how Composer works, how the Flow framework works, those settings files will override, uh, override each other. They have a certain hierarchy and at the end one wins. No matter which side is actually shown in the front end, the configuration will always be the same. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to have settings files in the different site packages if you have them. Um, so you have maybe a global configuration, maybe where is your tracking system, your PIVIC or Matomo analytics um, configuration or elastic ser search server. That is like global configuration which fits nicely into the settings. But Site-specific configuration has to be, um, for example, in the side node. This seems to be a good approach in, in many, most projects, like to have um, a custom node type for home pages where you can have a lot of uh, additional options in the inspector to say what is this site about or have like, um, yeah, so have some examples. Social media links, or um, like where is the imprint, or have uh, their own link to to uh, to privacy page, or say which links are shown in the food or stuff like that. If you can c control this in the inspector um, of the home page, then this works uh, much easier than using a settings YAML or other things like that. So also we had one example, so uh, parameters for web services, each site has its own key in the web service where it retrieves data. So this is also just a value that it's added to the home page. And in uh, Fusion, you can very easily access all the configurations, all the properties of the home page. You can even cache it if you want and then work with it like also the configuration. It's, it's very similar from how you approach it. So a uh, root page node type, what it's mostly called, or home page, doesn't really matter how it's called, um, is usually looks like that. It's a document, it has a nice icon, and then you can define all the properties that you need. API tokens, tracking IDs, themes, also could be one example that you can choose in the home page, how does the page look, uh, or like a SAS theme, company name, things like that. Or if you have uh, each site has a, um, a contact form, you could also like, for example, add the recipient where the mail should send be sent to. The for theming and customization, it's also easy to do with the the home page. Like to set a certain like to have a just a drop down with a theme, for example, and uh, or have the image property to add your own logo for the one side. Change typography, colors, I can set everything you can define. And there's also a third-party package to help in this case to make it a bit easier. It's called um, it's from Codus Market Neos Fee Module. Um, you can co customize colors and typography. I would call it a bit more advanced module. I'm not sure if if, um, if an editor would be really fine to use it uh, usually because you can. It's more a developer approach, what you can select, all the colors, and usually you don't want to have so many options for the for the actual people who want to use it. Uh, but I think you can really, I, I, I tried it in a project and it looked fine so far. And it recently also got the support for multi-sites, I think in January. Um, but you, you have to optimize it a bit to make it easily usable for, for people so they don't set the uh, font color to black and the black background color to black and then con uh, complain that their site is rather hard to read. You can also add custom SCSS. You see it at the bottom. You can define custom settings, like also have a dropdown for the font families, stuff like that. Check it out on GitHub. So um sometimes it's necessary to uh, separate the who can actually edit the content on the different sites so um you can create custom uh, you can create roles that are locked into one site tree that's possible 
or you can, since last year, it's it got a bit easier since the Düsseldorf Sprint because we made some additions to it. You can build dynamic policies. So you don't... I saw many installations where for every site there were a lot of policies defined in the YAML file to say who can access what. You can now build dynamic policies. It's a bit more advanced. Uh, so you can have one policy and control who can access what. Um, there's no full documentation for that yet or how you would do it easily, but um, you can uh, contact me and I can send an example. I wanted to, to put a, like a distribution with some examples on GitHub, but I wasn't able to, to finish everything I wanted. So um, I, will, uh, I can show you if, uh, if you contact me. So it works basically like you can map, for example, usernames to site names, or you can create then uh, you can create when you create a new site like a role and then ex assign that to users and read that in the policies. You can also that's the core feature ma match asset collections with sites to keep assets separated. That means uh, that is that that you have uh, in the Neos backend you can create a co collection. You can tell the site to only use that collection, and then people who uh, the editors of the single site when they upload images, it only uh, goes into the one collection. So every site has its own like asset um, ba basket, which then keeps you from reusing the content. But maybe some setups needed. So uh, notes on performance: many small sites just behave like one bigger site. There's no real with all the people I discussed it with, there's no real reason why a multi-site should be slower than a, s a bigger site, ha which has as many nodes as all the small sites uh, together. Uh, Neos can handle a lot of content um, and, and scales nicely. And um, this one project I talk about has eight sites containing 50,000 nodes, and it's super fast, even without varnish and, and so on. So um, I think even if it grows to 100,000 or 200,000, there shouldn't be a real problem that you wouldn't have in any site with like one site and 200,000 nodes. And um, future Neos ne developments that you just heard in the other room should make this much faster and um, more scalable even. Um, what is getting harder? The site selection in the backend. Um, on the top left, you can select the site you want to edit, and if your editor can or your administrator can access all the sites, it's getting a bit harder with more than 20, 30 sites because the inspector is not really built for that yet. So uh, I think a small adjustment needs to be made um, to the maybe in the new UI to allow like pagination or like um, scrolling those uh, sites, but. Um, that should be easy, and if somebody needs it, um, I think that could be easily built in. And the nice thing is also that uh, the back end, if you have policies that restrict which sites you can access, this list of in the site selection actually also doesn't show them anymore if you restrict them because the, the um, flow keeps them from loading, so the user doesn't even see that there are others. So I will now show how to create a multi-site. Um, in the backend module sites management, you have this nice button at the bottom left. It says new add new site. You can then uh, choose what you want to do, import or create a blank site uh, or create a new site package. I will come to that later because this is an optional one on the right. So you select your, ex for example, existing site package. You don't need several site package. You can all do it with the same site package say what type of node should the document the root node be in this case the root page makes sense or the home page type give it a name and continue then you can it shows up in this list you can uh, edit it to configure some things like the um, change the name again set the asset collection and then also but the important part is adding a domain here you can just add domain, set a theme, scheme, port, whatever you need, and then do some magic on the web server configuration. So the um, host name is mapped to the Neos installation. And then you have your working multi-site without any code changes on. And 
there's actually I didn't find a real reason why you would need several side packages for that. Um, one side package seems to work perfectly fine. Um, maybe there are some use cases where you want to distribute some parts of the code base, but I think other packages are maybe the better idea for that. So, um, or if you want to, for example, when you export a site, want to distribute each site's content into their own site package, but Maybe that's something helpful for development. I'm not sure if it's really important in production. So yeah, you have your new site. Here in this um, list, you can select it. That's what I meant. If it's like 30 sites, it could get a bit hard in the back end. Yeah. So other ways to create a site uh, in the site management module, you also saw this create a new site package where it um, where Neos will use the package um, um, site Kickstarter just to create a new package actually. So it creates actually code and, and a little um, uh, boilerplate for a new site and it also creates then the, the site for it. You can do the same on the CLI with flow site create. You give it a name, you give it a package key. In this case you cannot choose the node type you have to do that manually later. Um, that's a bit uh, cumbersome, but it's also possible. And um, what is important about creating sites? With the, kick with the Kickstarter, you need this package. You don't need it if you just create it for the one site package. Um, you can build it everything manually without any Kickstarter or without the, the wizard, but that's the you really need to know what you do because the boilerplate also creates a small XML file with some uh, basic content which you can import to actually access the site in the backend, and it is rather helpful. Um, yeah, if you create the, the from the CLI the, the site package, you have to import it manually. Um, and you have to check if you have multiple site packages that you set the dependencies. All you have one usually one main site package, and the others should depend on that, so the configuration is loaded in the correct order, and you don't have like a, um, a behavior which you cannot understand at the end. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, the settings files have one hierarchy, and uh, that has to be kept. So, I think I was a bit fast now. Um, do That's you all right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sebastian. Yeah. We do have time for questions. Um, yes, um, thank you, first of all. Uh, your whole presentation was for a customer which needs multi-sites, like 11 sites. Uh, does it make sense to build, because a web agency have a very common code repository. Does it make sense to have five websites for five different customers in one installation? Uh, I, I think it could make sense. Th their actual other idea with this bigger project with the 4,000 sites would be those 4,000 sites for 4,000 4, different customers. So if you know that your code base is the same and you're sure about your security and the policies are set up well, I think this is perfectly fine for 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 uh, very um, cost-effective websites, for cheap websites, where you can just say, okay, the new customer wants one, and then we click a button. You make a small backend module for your administrator to, with one click, set the domain, do all the necessary steps, and then you can send the customer the link, and here is your site. He can change his configuration, his theme, and that would make a lot of sense, yeah. Thank you. Next question. A question about uh, the policies. Do you have uh, like the feeling that it has some performance impact on a backend if you do the policy thing that you say this user only see that side or that part of the site and the other see a different thing? Because we, we tried that in a project and, and have the feeling that it has quite a huge impact on a performance. Um, for users only accessing a certain site, I don't see the performance impact. And my tests also didn't show a lot of uh, big problem. But that's, as I said, this super big project. I would there need to be tests if, if it affects with real data also. 
Um, I know that uh, from like a website where there's uh, several uh, front-end logins with different user groups and you have different content which is shown to different people, that is a problem not only from the performance but also uh, the doctrine query cache sometimes creates errors there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was your example like with having policies for separate sites or one site with different policies? Yeah, our example is one side with different policies and yeah. subparts of the tree. But I imagine that it might be the same problem if you have different sites because it's just the same node tree structure. Yeah, but it's a bit easier because you don't have like different caches for the same site, but each site has its yeah. own like universe. Mm -hmm. I think that should make it easier. Yeah. Or better better to optimize. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And and another question for the for the dynamic roles which you said. Like you tried, is that only possible with like roles for different sites, or would that system be also be possible to use in like in one site and different subtree parts yep. to map them dynamically? You can use also. it everywhere, but I think it needs a bit more testing, and um, it's all in the core. You it's just a bit tricky to set it up. You can also inject for the for the policy your own um, context uh, classes helpers which, for example, can access certain user properties. Like if you in the user want to select um, he has the certain right, and then you with this uh, context you can access those and then map them to your sites, for example. Mm -hmm. It's a bit tricky to set up, but it works. I think it needs more testing and maybe then also some improvements to the core if performance problems or other doctrine problems should arise. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um. What's your strategy on content collections? Uh, like you would like to uh, reference the entire content collection and reuse it like you showed with one content element in the reference inspector. Um, it's no different strategy. Well, what my customer they use is uh, they use a lot of also multi-column elements, for example, and, and they also give you the title. And then it's just the same. And the editing, everything works. So if you reference the entire content collection, you have all, you know, in the lower left in the structure tree, you see all the elements, you can navigate, everything works. Uh, no, that, that doesn't work because the reference element doesn't um, um, add the, the nodes to these other pages. So you can still edit them, but you won't see them in the structure tree. Okay. And there's one issue you have to be careful about if the editors have links in this content that you reference, which are maybe relative to the current page Neos cannot change the link to the different page because the URI builder is not the URI builder only is interested in in the side node of the content element that you work on and doesn't map it to a different side node. So um, what they did, which worked for them well enough because it was not so many uh, to create relative links uh, instead of node links in the uh, we are the UI. I'm not sure. <laughs> I never tried it. I, I always re uh, referenced the, the parent, yeah. But uh, I'm not sure if why why it should not possible. But yeah, I wouldn't know of any constraint regarding that. Dimitri, you are <laughs> also not good. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Stay tuned. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, I have a short question about the uh, access restrictions um, for the asset collections. You said it's possible to restrict access for user just to use one asset collection, but is it still possible to use like shared asset collections at the same time? Or if I restrict it, am I bound to one asset collection? For, I didn't test it super in detail, but um, from from what I saw is that if you as soon as you say one asset collection is bound to one side, it only will only show this one. 
collection. I think this is something that has to be improved. Okay, thank you. Because, uh, as I said, it would it will uh, solve this problem uh, that you want to have like a limited bucket, but you also want to have the shared bucket. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Other more questions. Uh, you mentioned a way to copy content from one base site to a new site, like a subtree or something. Do you have any experiences regarding references in this copied subtree? Because that would uh, the reference node will still be in the old page. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it's actually a problem because Neos cannot just know. I, I mean, you have to, the package I built doesn't resolve those references, so it also cost uh, in a bit cost in the beginning some problems because the references to some nodes were still references to the initial original nodes, and then when the editor changed something, that was not so good because he changed the initial side instead of the new side. Um, they said, in this case, they know how to solve it and they do it um, themselves, but uh, the next step of this module would be just to find out uh, in this uh, copy process, which is uh, to update the references. I think that can be done, uh, needs more work and wasn't done yet. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thanks very much, Sebastian.